Hi, this is Professor Jen Mei Chen at California State University, Long Beach. In this video today, we'll look at how to make sense of some familiar formulas. In a separate video, we talked about the connections between visual patterns and their algebraic representations. Let's explore this connection deeper in many of the familiar geometric formulas that you've been using throughout your life. In particular, we'll look at the area of parallelogram, triangle, and trapezoid. A parallelogram is a shape that has two sets of parallel lines, the adjoining angles do not have to be a right angle or 90 degrees. But if all the adjoining angles are 90 degrees, we get a rectangle. That is why a rectangle is just a special case for a parallelogram. And the lengths of the sides do not have to be the same as well. But if all four sides are the same, we get a square. And that is why a square is a special case of a rectangle, which is also a special case of a parallelogram. The connection I like to make is, where do I see that the area of the parallelogram is given by b times h, or the base times the height? If you were to label the long side of the parallelogram by b for base, then the vertical drop from the other side of the parallelogram gives you the height. Again, the focus here is to make sense of this formula based on what we see is the picture of the parallelogram. You can see that I can form a triangle on the left-hand side of this parallelogram. And if I were to cut this piece out and then attach it to the right-hand side of this parallelogram, and they fit exactly in the spot so that the resulting shape is a perfect rectangle. And this rectangle has length b and width h. And recall that we know the area of a rectangle of length b, width h is b times h. So the area of the parallelogram is exactly the same as the area of the rectangle, which is also b times h. Next, let's look at why the area of a triangle is half times base times height. Now your triangle could look very different. I'm just gonna do a general case, but the formula actually works for any shaped triangle. Let's suppose that you have a triangle so that its longer side is the base b, and the vertical drop that you get is called the height h. And you remember that the area of the triangle is is half times base times height. But where do you see that in the picture? From our previous discussion, we know that the base times height gives you the area of a parallelogram of base B and height H. And the one half tells you that I'm only taking half of that area. So pictorially, I must start with a full parallelogram of base B, height H. Then it shouldn't be so hard to see that the triangle that I started with is precisely half of that parallelogram we just drew. That is why when I see the area of a triangle, I should always think of it as taking half of the area of a parallelogram. Next, let's try to make sense of the area formula for trapezoid. Well, the trapezoid is this kind of a funny shape where you only have one set of parallel lines. And if we label the top length as A and the bottom length in the set of parallel line as B, and the distance between the top side and the bottom side is H, then the area of this trapezoid is half times A plus B times H. I'm going to show you three different ways to make sense of this formula. The nice thing about multiplication is that you can multiply things in any order from left to right. So I'm going to realize this formula as doing a plus b first. Whatever I get from that, I'm going to multiply by h. And whatever I get from that, I take this entire thing and take half of that. This is how I'm going to realize the area of this trapezoid. So if I realize or make sense of my formula this way, then what I see is I have an area of a parallelogram with length a plus b and height h. Then the one half at the end tells me I'm taking half of that parallelogram. So I take my original trapezoid, right? And I try to form this parallelogram with length a plus b. So one way to do that is by just extending the top portion of it of length b and then extending the bottom portion of it with the length of a. Then the resulting parallelogram will have a base of a plus b and height h. So the area of the trapezoid that you really want is just half of the area of the entire parallelogram of base a plus b and height h. For the next way to look at it, we want to take advantage of the fact that when you multiply things, you can change the order of this operation. In particular, I'm going to do a plus b first and group the half with h. By seeing things this way, you're essentially looking for the area of some parallelogram with base a plus b and the height half h. Let's try to see that in this picture. We take our original trapezoid and then do the same trick as before. We're going to extend the length of both base and the top. So then the base and the top is exactly a plus b. Then I take half of the height h and just cut that across 
across the entire parallelogram. So the resulting parallelogram that is smaller, that's inside of this bigger parallelogram, has half of the height of the other one. Then the area of the trapezoid consists of the top portion and the bottom portion. And you'll see that this top portion essentially is the same given by the right side of this parallelogram. I'm going to show you yet one more way of visualizing the area of a trapezoid. This third way of looking at it takes the formula of the trapezoid and then distribute it. So we have one half which then times the quantity a plus b times h. So if you leave that one half alone for now and then distribute the h in for each factor in that binomial, I get a h and then plus b h. Then I distribute the one half into each of those two components of that binomial, which gives me one half a h and one half b h. If you see the area of a trapezoid this way, then essentially you're looking at two pieces of triangle, adding it up. In the first one, you have a triangle of base A and height H. In the second triangle, you have a base B and a height H. This one is probably the most straightforward to see in a trapezoid. If you're simply to cut the trapezoid on its diagonal this way, then you can see the triangle that is formed on the left has exactly the base B and height H. And the trapezoid that is formed on the right has exactly base A and height H. So the area of the trapezoid is made up of the area of the left triangle, which is half BH, and the area of the right triangle, which is half AH. I want to challenge you to see if there's another way you're seeing the area of a trapezoid that is not discussed here. In this lesson, we quickly explore the connection between algebraic expressions of a formula and its visual representation. So I want to encourage you to explore the structure of a formula the next time you use it.